God bless you, and again, welcome to uh, another broadcast of the Victory Tabernacle Church of Raleigh, North Carolina, and we're certainly glad for another opportunity to come into your homes tonight and to share with you and to uh, talk with you uh, from God's Word that we might learn and grow together, that we might deepen our relationship uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore giving us strength to be able to face the crisis of life. Again, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of uh, your life at this time, and we know that it seems as though for many it may be hectic, but it's good to know that in the midst of these kind of circumstances and situations, we can have the peace of God and peace with God. Again, we thank you for uh, your kindness and your generosity towards us. And we thank you that you're letting us know that uh, this uh, broadcast is really being a blessing to you and to your family. And certainly uh, it is reaching others. And we thank God for you being a part of our evangelistic trust uh, to reach uh, the world with a message of hope and a message of, of, of deliverance and, and a message of salvation. Again, we thank you. And again, I trust that you are doing well and you are readjusting and you are making it through uh, this pandemic. Truly, uh, we know that a day makes a difference in our lives and we know that the God that we serve Amen. Gives us that day. Having said that, we realize that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's our choice. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Again, uh, we're just praying for those uh, all over our nation, praying for our nation and our president, our, our uh, governments. Uh, the task that they have upon them to help uh, navigate uh, these uncharted waters, and certainly they need our prayers. Uh, not our criticism, but our prayers. Amen. Not our complaints, but our prayers. For the Bible said that we should pray for those that are in authority. And I oftentimes say, and I know this will come across a little rough, but uh, it, the edges will be smoothed out, that uh, if we are complaining and talking more about what is going on uh, in our government than praying, then we are part of the problem. So when we pray, things happen. When we pray, uh, God changes things. And not only does he change things, but he changes us, our way of thinking, our way of looking at things. So continue to uh, keep them in prayer, especially all of those that are giving service uh, to those at this time uh, during this crisis. Let's pray for them and pray for their families. And again, uh, we say to you, thank you for your service. Thank you for putting your lives on the line. Thank you for putting your lives on hold. Many of you, your families not even able to interact with your families uh, the way that you uh, want to because of uh, this virus. So again, we are praying for you. And again, we thank you for your dedication and for your service. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this night of, of study in your word. And Father, we thank you for your word because we realize, Lord, that it is your word, Father, that we are standing upon, your word that we are resting in, your word that we are holding on to, Father, to help us through this life. And God, we realize, Lord, that not just now have your word become important, God, but your word has always been important. Your word has always been uh, the catalyst, Lord, to uh, help us through uh, the, the situations and the problems of life and the ills of life. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you not just for your written word, but we thank you for Jesus Christ, who became the living word, the very image of you, Lord, letting us know and see through his life uh, what the word really says about you. And we thank you for being our God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that uh, when your son Jesus left, 
he sent him, Lord, and that uh, you said that he would lead us and guide us into all truth. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that strengthens us day by day. We thank you for your mercies. We realize that it is of your mercies that we are not consumed. We thank you for your compassion that failed not. And most of all, God, for your faithfulness, God, because we realize that we're not always faithful, God. And Lord, we repent of that, Lord, and we humble ourselves before you. And we ask you to help us, God, to be more consistent, God, in our walk with you be more faithful. We ask you to bless this study, bless those that would hear it, God. Help us to spread it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we've been in this study and we've been waging a war on worry. And I guess by now that you are giving uh, worry a black eye. Amen. You have uh, somewhat uh, uh, thrown it to the wrestling match. Uh, floor and you have pinned it down and you are gaining victory in that work in that area of worry and anxiety and just uh, being at your wits end we are grateful today our study uh, in Matthew uh, Matthew the sixth chapter and uh, I guess we can read that again tonight for those that may be your first time uh, listeners to this here uh, beginning at verse 25, Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiments? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, or what all shall ye be clothed. For all of these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what ye have need of all of these, knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take Therefore, no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So again, we've been just walking through this study, and we, we're hoping that it's being helpful to you. And on last week, we talked about that uh, uh, worry is something that pulls us apart. Worry is something that suffocates us, that strangles us. In, in Matthew 13 and 22, uh, lets us know that uh, when Jesus sold, uh, was sowing the seed, uh, he told them or gave them an illustration of how that the, the, the word is choked out you know, through uh, the unwanted rubbish uh, that's in our lives. And we, we, we know that it is important to understand that Satan is trying to suffocate us, trying to strangle us, trying to uh, divide us, uh, pull us apart or give us undivided uh, loyalties, which we can't because we found out in this text in that 24th verse, it says, no man can serve two masters. So we, we can't uh, have faith in God and doubt him at the same time. We can't serve God and, and the, the devil at the same time. We can't have God first in our lives and mammon first in our lives. He said we either love one or hate the other or hate one and love the other. So we understand that. So in, uh, we said last night that uh, worry, uh, last uh, uh, week, that worry was unreasonable for the, the, the Christian uh, we we, we uh, spend our times or we focus our attention on issues, amen, that uh, really are of less important. Uh, and that's found in verse 25. In verse 26, it said, uh, it found out that it was unnatural, you know, uh, because for us, uh, even the creatures of the earth, 
uh, don't worry about things. And we said do that, we find out that uh, the animals don't uh, have high blood pressure and uh, the birds, they may are not having the heart attacks because uh, they're wondering what they're gonna eat or they're gonna find some worms or some seeds in the ground. We understand that as Christians, um, we are much higher beings than that. We said it was unhelpful too and unfruitful. In verse 27, uh, worry and fear uh, produces nothing worthwhile. Uh, uh, it, it, we said that it also uh, help us to understand that anything that is beyond our control is beyond our control. Uh, so why worry about it? Why fret about it? Uh, then we want to start uh, the last um, uh, two things of these five. In verse 30, he says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall, you not, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So verse 30 lets us know that worry is unnecessary and it's unbecoming to a Christian. It's unbecoming to a covenant child of God because God promises to take care of us. Amen. He promises to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So when we are in the kingdom of God. We have a king who is able, amen, to meet all of our needs. And that was one thing that the king was noted for back in those days, that uh, in his providence, in his kingdom, that he had everything under control. Whatever he uh, needed, he had access to it. And he always was the go-to person when there was a need. And we ought to think about if an earthly king can have that kind of power, if an earthly king can have that kind of resources, if an earthly king can meet the needs of his kingdom people, what about the God that we serve that created the earth, that created the king that created all things that are in the earth and has given it to man for his enjoyment. Then uh, in uh, verse 31 and 32, he says to us, therefore take no thought saying what you shall eat or what you shall drink or with all shall we be clothed. For after all of these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father know what we have need, know that we have need of all of these things. Last but not least, he says it puts us in a place of unbelief. It, it, it puts us in a place, uh, he identifies with the Gentiles, with the world. The world is frustrated. The world is panicking. The world is full of anxiety. The world is worrying itself uh, to an early grade. The world, amen, act as though, amen, that they do not have a source to go to. And Jesus is making it clear that we as children of God should not have that, that should not be a part of our lives. He makes it clear, amen, that, that we're acting as though that God does not exist. We're acting as though that we do not have a daddy. We're acting as though God is limited and what he can do, what he can provide, he's limited in the fact that uh, it's as though he has some extremities. He's going to run out of something. He's not going to be able to find something. He's not going to be able to do something to help us. But we understand that there is nothing that God uh, can not do. We understand no matter how hard the situation is in our lives, that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. One of the main issues uh, uh, with worry is on our part. I say it's on our part. Uh, now, we can contribute to a lot of things, and we can pass the book and say, well, it's because of whoever it may be, my children, uh, my supervisor, my job, or, or my church, or whatever. But, but, but the reason uh, for worry, amen, is that the most part, 
it, the issue lies with us. Amen. And, and it's because that we try to do God's job. Now, that's that's one of the things that we want to make clear here uh, tonight is that any time you try to do God's job, you take on a responsibility, amen, that you cannot carry out. Yes, and worry, worry is because we try to do God's job. But we got to remember that God is able to do his job. And we're going to uh, stay in our lane, as we say today. We're going to leave God's job up to him. Let's go to Isaiah 40, because we want to build this case uh, uh, for uh, putting our trust in God. And because that's what this study is all about as we uh, wage um, war on worry is that we begin to trust God. We begin to lean on God. We begin to put our faith in God. One of the things that will help us in that area of, 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 of putting our trust in God, putting our faith in God, leaning upon God, is that we understand who it is that we serve. We understand who is this God that we call our father, that we call our daddy. Who is this God that speaks to us and tell us, take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. I mean, don't, don't, don't get in a frenzy about things, uh, but just know that he is able uh, to take care of us. So let's talk about this, God, because one, the Bible says that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's kind of walk through a few verses in chapter 40 to help us get a good uh, uh, hold on this God that we serve. Let's begin, amen, at verse 12 and go through 18. Who have, this is the God that, that, that you are putting your trust in. This is the God that you are relinquishing uh, your hold on things to and giving it over to him. This is the God that you are saying that, okay, he's got this. He, 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 he's he, he, he's going to handle this. He's going to fix this. He's going to work this out. And, and if God's going to do it, there's no use to me trying to put my hands on it. There's no use of me trying to hold on to it. There's no use of me trying to wrestle with it and leave sleep over it because he's well capable. This, this text shows us how capable the God that we are putting our trust in is. This text shows us that the God that we are leaning on, the God that we are resting in is faithful and he is trustworthy. He can be trusted. In verse 12, he says, who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? He have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and have meted out the heavens with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance. This is the God that you serve. When you think about, you know, a measuring cup, if you know if you are uh, 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 someone that loves to cook, how you measure out certain quantities of stuff when you're making a cake, you know, so much flour and so much oil and, and, and so forth, so much sugar. God measures and God weighs, but he does it on a larger scale. We're talking about the waters. We're talking about the mountains. We're talking about the dust of the earth. This is the God that you are putting your trust in. You know, I, I can't even phantom that. I just know that because God's word says that he is able to do this, that it is true. Who have directed the spirit of the Lord or uh, been his counselor or have taught him? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him and showed to him the way of understanding. Who is it that knows more than God? This is what the scripture is pretty much trying to tell you. Who is it that can tell God how to do his job? Who is it, amen, that can show God how to fix something or how to work out something? No, 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 no. God is a God that is omniscient. He knows everything. 
And, and he says, behold, the nation are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn for the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will we liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? Who is it, amen, that is able to do more than God can do? Who is it that we can compare with God? Who is it that we can size up with God or become God's equal. There is no one. God is not equal to anyone. God doesn't have any rivals. And you must understand that when this God that you're putting your trust in, this God, amen, that you are leaning on, this God that you are relinquishing your hold on life and saying, Lord, my life is in your hand. Lord, I'm trusting you. Lord, I am following you. Lord, I am depending on you. Lord, I am looking to you. This is the God that we're talking about here in in this text. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This ought to rejoice you, amen, that, that God, amen, that, that can measure out, amen, the, the waters and, and to weigh out, amen, the mountains, amen, and that knows every speck of dust. This is the God that is telling you that if you trust me, you will not be ashamed. If you trust me, you will not be confounded. If you trust me, I will bring you through and I will bring you out. And I, I'm here to tell you tonight, amen, whatever, amen, that you're in, God wants you to know, amen, that he's in it with it with you. And if he's in it with you, he can bring you through it. And if he brings you through it, he will bring you out of it. You need to say to yourself, this God that I'm putting my trust in, amen, is bringing me out. Matter of fact, we said in our studies, and our messages on Sunday a few weeks ago, amen. When you say amen, it means that it is so. It shall be done. It shall come to bad, pass. So you need to say to yourself, I can see myself already out of it. I can see myself already coming through, amen, this time uh, in our lives, this, t this crisis in my life. Amen. God has already done it. That's why he says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. You must believe that God is who he says he is. Is, amen. And that God would do what he says he would do. This is the, why our text is trying to get us to really uh, take a, another look at the God that we serve. Amen. And begin to trust him. Let's go down to verse 21 through 23. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heaven as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Just think about that. He says, God is able to do this. He, 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 he sitteth upon the circles of the earth. Now, as the old folk used to say, he's high, but he, he looks low. And, and, and the inhabitants of the earth as, uh, as grasshoppers. He stretched out the heavens like a curtain. You know, this is the God that is trying to tell you, amen, that he's got this. He's working it out. He's fixing it. He's, he's doing something uh, unknown to you, unseen by you. Matter of fact, he said in his words that our eyes have not seen nor our ears heard uh, the things that God, amen, has planned for us. But then he says to us, he reveals them to us by his spirit. He reveals them to us through his word. But it takes faith to be able to see the unrevealed, the unseen. 
Verse 25 says, To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? He says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who have created these things. Bringeth out the host by numbers. He calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might. For he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why saith thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, either is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. This is the God that is saying to you, that why are you worried? Why are you full of anxiety? Why is it that you're at your wish end? Why are you saying that now that this God has been described to you uh, uh, in a way that you understand uh, his power, you understand his capabilities, you understand his matchless abilities. And he says, now that he, you know, he weighs out the mountains and, and, and he knows how many specks of dust it is in the earth. I mean, he, he holds the rivers, you know, and the oceans, you know, in the hollow of his hand. This God says, now I stretch out the, the, the heavens like a curtain. You ever get up in the morning, you know, and you open your curtains up and you let the light in. God says, that's how I stretch out the heavens. I, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. That can just stretch out the heavens like that, like you open up your curtain. Then he says to you, he says, now, what is your problem? You know, is your way hid from me? Is your problem hid from me? Why are you saying that I have forgotten about you? Why are you saying that I'm not concerned about you? You need to understand that, that God, amen, is able to do uh, these things for us. And, and so the reason we worry is we try to do God's job. And last but not least, we assume the responsibility for something that God did not put on our plate. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. And, and see, can we... First Peter five. First Peter five. Let's go down to verse six. So we said we assume responsibility for something that God did not put on our plate. Uh, first Peter five, six and seven, he says, humble yourselves, therefore, uh, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. We assume responsibility for something that God did not put on our plate. And he says here that we should cast all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. Just think about that, that God is telling us, amen, to cast all our cares upon him. So let's go to Psalms 46 to help us as we end this study. Make sure we're doing good on our time. Uh, Psalms 46. Listen, listen what the psalmist says here. Uh, beginning at verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, if you ever notice uh, how that a lot of people that are of importance, uh, and, and even the president, he has an entourage, uh, and, and these are uh, his uh, security personnel, his personal security. Think about that. Think about that. You know, you look out there and you see all of these cars when the president's going somewhere, you know, and, and, and they're lined up. They shut down the freeways when they come into town. Amen. They got police parked everywhere, making sure, amen, that he's protected. God is saying uh, to us that I am your refuge. I am your personal 
security. I am your personal protection. Amen. Refuge, this word refuge uh, means to flee from worry. It means to flee to peace. To flee from worry is one thing, but to flee to peace is another. You know, you know a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to worry about it, but then they don't have no peace. But when God is your refuge, you can flee from worry and flee to peace. Refuge, a, a safe place, a protected place. Refuge, a higher place out of the reach, amen, of harm and danger of the enemy or any other thing that was threatening our well-being. Not only is it a hiding place, not only is it a place of protection, uh, refuge is, but it's high out of the reach of the enemy, those that would threaten those that are in it. That's what God is trying to tell you. Not only am I your refuge, not only am I your protection, not only I'm your personal security, but I am, I have you in a place way above where your enemy can get a hold of you, way above where your enemy can uh, destroy you. Matter of fact, he says, no weapon that he formed against you will prosper. Not that they won't be formed, not that he won't try. Not that he won't cause confusion and mayhem and chaos, but he said it won't prosper. Now, it it, the, what, the reason he tells you it won't prosper is because when you trust him, when you don't worry about it, when you uh, cast your cares on him, when you put it in his hands, God takes a hold of it and you don't have to worry about what the enemy doing coming to fruition. Matter of fact, uh, Joseph said he can mean it for evil, but God will work it for your good. God will work it in your favor. What a mighty God we serve. He said God is our refuge and a very present help in trouble. Amen. That, that word help means to aid. It means to assist. Hebrews 14 and 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. Aid, aid in the time of need. Amen. And, and God is trying to help us to understand that he will aid us in the times of our anxiety, in the times of our worries, in the times of our frustration. He said he's a very present help. That word very there is the same uh, Hebrew word that often the scripture you quote, that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. That word very is exceeding. God is able to exceed your expectation. God is able, amen. He, 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 he is a very present help. He, he will exceed the situation with aid, amen, beyond what you need, beyond what, what you think that you need to get through, what you think that you need to help you. God will do that, amen. And he, he, he helps us to understand, amen, that, that because he is, that, that we don't have to worry. A very present help and trouble, therefore I will not fear. In other words, he, he, the, the, the writer here said, I found God to be everything that he said he would be. I found God, amen, to come through the way that he said he would come through. He's a very present help, amen. It's emphatic that he has proven himself. That's why in Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee. Yes, I, I, will, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my power. So we understand tonight, amen, that God is our refuge. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. And as I close, notice what he says here. He says that uh, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. There's that word again. He is our personal security, our personal protection in this Christ. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he have made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. There's that word again. He's our personal security. God. But then he said, be still. 
stop fretting. Stop being worried. That, that, that word that be still too has the connotation of let it go. You know, you know, we use that saying now in these last days, you know, when somebody just constant hammering something that has happened and they say, let it go, let it go. But this is what he's saying. Be still, let it go. Take your hands off it. Release it unto God. Give it over to God. Let God handle it. Let God take care of it. Amen. You need to understand that, that he is uh, your refuge. You need to understand that he is your personal security. So you don't have to worry about the threats. You don't have to worry about the plots of the enemy. You don't have to worry about, about what the enemy is trying to do to bring you down, trying to do to pull you apart, trying to do to suffocate you, trying to do to strangle you because you have a personal security. You have a spiritual bodyguard. You have one who is able to make sure, amen, that, that, that see, and that's the thing that I like about it and we're through, that, that, that when you think about a personal bodyguard, you know, you ever uh, uh, seen that movie, The Bodyguard, how that when they're trying to protect someone, the first thing they do is surround them and, 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 and get the person behind them away from the threat. That's what God is trying to tell you, amen, that, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, amen, I, 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 I put you behind me. I surround you. I, 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 I take the blow, amen. I, I, I take the hit. Uh, 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 I, 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 I allow the force, amen, to, to come against me so that you are protected. This is the God that you serve. This is the God that's telling you, take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Cast your cares on that I'll be your refuse. I'll be your personal bodyguard. I'll be your protection. So be still. Let it go. Release it. Take your hands off it. And start giving God the praise because he's working it out, because he's fixing it, because he's taking care of it, because he's going to see you through. Amen. All you got to do is, is just realize that because he is your refuge, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. Yes, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. You didn't make that decision tonight. No matter what I deal with, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. No matter what I go through, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to hold on and I'm going to hold out. I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord in my life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for helping us to uh, wage war on worry for helping us, O oh God, to understand, Lord, that you, O oh God, is well capable. You, O oh God, is well able to take care of us. And we should not worry like the world. We should not be in a tizzy like the world. We should not be fretting like the world. We should not be acting like we don't have a God and that you don't exist and that you are incapable of taking care of us. For that tonight, Lord, as we study you, God, in, in, in your word, Father, we relinquish our hope. We be still. We let it go. We take our hands off it. We release it unto you, Father. And now we rest in your love. We rest in your capable hands. We rest in your safety. We rest, oh God, in the safety of you being our refuge and our protection. And Father, we ask you tonight, Lord, if there's someone out there, Lord, that don't know you, Father, and the pardon of their sins, Father, Lord, that they would just let it go. Be still. And realize, Lord, that you are able, God, to save them. You are able to bring them out of whatever they're in, whatever they're going through, whatever they're dealing with. All they have to do is just come to you by your word. Father, you said, Lord, if they would just confess you as, as Lord and as Savior, if they would just confess with their mouths and believe in their heart that you died for their sins and God raised you from the dead, they shall be saved. You told them, whosoever calleth on your name shall be saved. And tonight, Lord, help them repeat that prayer, God, and by faith believe you and receive you into their lives, God, so that you will be their refuge. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We hope that you have uh, been blessed tonight in this study as we wage war on worry and realize that God is your refuge. He's your personal security, your personal bodyguard, and God will take care of you. We'll see you on Sunday morning if God should tarry and I should live and be in my health and strength for another word from the Lord. God bless you tonight.